Hello, students of statics. Welcome to this kind of general overview lecture of what is statics and where did this topic come from? And it's really based upon Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. And so Sir Isaac Newton lived in the 17th century. He actually born, was born in 1642. He published his laws of motion in 1687. And these three different laws of motion relate directly to what we do here in engineering mechanics statics. And so his first law, particle remains at rest or continues in motion unless it's acted upon by an outside force. As we think about what is this thing we call statics, statics is fundamentally things that are at rest. Now there actually will be a few problems which will continue in motion. I'll talk about those in the context of these laws. So uh, what we're really saying here is that forces and motion interact. If there is no change in force, then there is no change in motion. Now really law one and law two are directly related to each other. In his second law, he says, the acceleration of a particle is proportional to the resultant force acting on it and in the direction of the force. So we can write this as the following equation. We can say that the sum of forces, and it turns out that the summation is a resultant, basically resultant is adding things up. So sum of forces is equal to, now the proportional piece here actually refers to a proportionality constant which we call mass and then we have our acceleration. Now this equation is not yet complete. The reason it's not complete is this is a vector equation. We have this in the direction of the force. As written, this is a scalar equation. We differentiate scalar from vectors with vector lines over the top of our vector terms. Mass is not a vector term. It is a scalar term, but acceleration and force are both vector terms. And so this essentially is Newton's second law in equation form. Let's go ahead and look at the third law, and then I'm going to circle back to the second. The third law looks at multiple bodies, okay, interacting bodies, and that the forces between them are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and collinear. So setting a little example here to law number three, if we have box A, and box A happens to be touching box B, we could separate these out and create free body diagrams of each one of them. So let me go ahead and grab box B, move it over here to the side. So box B has a force on it, which is exerted by box A. I can label that force F. Box A also has a force on it exerted by box B. And these two forces are equal and opposite and collinear. And so that's really where law three is coming in. So let's take a little bit deeper dive into this idea of F equals MA and talk a little bit more about how this applies in statics. And so sum of forces as a vector is equal to mass times acceleration as a vector. So it turns out that in statics, every single problem that we solve will have this acceleration term equal to zero. Enjoy that while you can, because in dynamics, that acceleration term is typically going to be non-zero, at least going to be constant. But here in statics, it will be equal to zero. Now, that has two different possible interpretations. One of those is that things are static, which basically means they are not moving. And the other, if it's equal to zero, means that it has a constant or excuse me, a constant velocity. So any particle moving um, with a constant velocity has a zero acceleration, right? Because acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity. And so two different possibilities. 95 plus percent of them in statics will fall into the top category. Now, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit about is um, units and gravitational acceleration and these types of things. It's a common error that I see, so we like to start it early. So taking our equation forces and mass and acceleration, and I'm going to turn this into a table. Okay, so my table... So my table is going to have two rows. One of them is going to be our U.S. customary units. And then the bottom row is going to be our, our SI units or our metric system. 
So all forces in SI, I think you're probably familiar, will be in Newtons. All forces in US customary unit system will be in pounds force. It turns out that every single pound that you see in this class in dynamics, really in probably most of your future engineering career, will be pounds force. You essentially can take pounds mass and just eject it from your brain. You will likely not use it again in your engineering lifetime. So instead of pounds mass, we end up using for a mass in US customary, a slug. And it turns out a slug is kind of a parallel unit to a kilogram. And then since we're talking about gravitational acceleration, we need to talk about acceleration of gravity, which in US customary is 32.2 feet per second squared. And we often call this G. Now, uh, gravitational acceleration is a directional acceleration, so we need to assign a sign to it in problems with a directional system, an axis system. And then our gravity here in SI units is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so in both of these, we could write that F is equal to M times G. And those units work out perfectly well for both systems. And once again, forces is equal to mass times, in this case, it's our acceleration due to gravity. So anytime you see a pound, it is a pound's force. 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 It is never a pound's mass. Um, so a lot of SI problems will give you information. They'll give you masses in kilograms. They'll ask for forces in newtons. It turns out that in a lot of US customary problems, they'll give you weights, right? So the weight is the same thing as this pounds force. But there are times you'll need a mass in US customary, especially if you're going to enter it here into an you know, equation. Anytime where the M shows up, you need to divide that pounds force by 32.2 to end up with a mass in slugs. Okay, so really dial that in. It's an important tool that leads to a lot of honestly like needless errors by students. But I have confidence in you and I believe in you and I know that you're going to dial this in from the start. So that is Newton's second law and essentially how it provides an overview, provides a structure for engineering mechanics statics. Thanks for your attention today.